Welcome back. So today I thought that in keeping with our decorating series that we've sort of fallen into lately, we would take a look at something that I'm sure is going to be near and dear to the heart of thrifters and project freaks everywhere. And that is how to display your collections. So instead of just dumping the collection out on the coffee table and hoping for the best, let's take a look at how to show off those goodies and thrift store finds. So when we come back. We're going to start off with the basic. And what we have here is a printer's tray. Uh, this is a drawer from a large cabinet that would have held the letters for old fashioned printing presses. Now, because we use many, many more E's than Q's, for example, the little compartments are different sized to accommodate uh, the different volume of letters. Consequently, it makes for a very handy storage spot. And the drawers are great. This was a very big uh, display setup years ago. Um, I'd say this has probably been around for at least 30 or 40 years in the realm of popular decorating. So we've got our, our drawer, the drawer is on the wall, and we've got our shelves in it. Now I have to apologize going in. Our first few displays are going to be shelves. And the reason for that is simply because that's what I could find. That seems to be the hot, displayable, small, collectible. But keep in mind, this could be anything from thimbles to hand-painted miniature items, uh, small figurines, postage stamps even. If it's small and needs to be stored, this is an awfully good way to do it. Now this is also a printer's tray full of shelves. The difference here, of course, is that it's laid on the horizontal. Now, as with the previous uh, tray full of shells, I believe that the collectors fixed the items into the tray. In other words, they did something, they used some kind of glue or adhesive. If you value your collectibles, make sure you use a real friendly adhesive like poster putty. Um, stay away from you know, Gorilla Glue, for example, because you may find that you'll want to replace the individual items or that you may tire of this and you may want to show your items off in a different kind of storage setup. So remember, use an adhesive that is forgiving. This is another, this is not a printer's tray. But this is one of those uh, sort of generic display boxes that was made to resemble a printer tray. Once again, we've got shell, shells in our display space. And in this case, it doesn't appear that the shells have been glued in place. Frankly, if you can get away with leaving your stuff loose, I would say try to leave them loose. It's better for the safety of your items. Now, again, we've got another uh, printer style tray. This is not a printer's tray. This is uh, a shadow box full of little cubbies, probably designed to resemble a printer's tray. Because as I said, they've been around as display units for a long time, certainly long enough for companies to make knockoffs. But I did want you to see the small tray 
the one that's on the left-hand side in front of the larger tray. I have no idea what this is. This is a gorgeous little tray. It really is. And it just goes to show you that you can get little trays like this in all kinds of sizes and configurations. This one is small. It's got a very unique configuration. I do love that. I think that one is great. So, finally, moving away from shells, we've got a similar display set up here. In this case, we have the drawers from a library card catalog system. At one time, and those of us of a certain age definitely recall this, if you wanted to find a book in a library, you went over to the card catalog, you opened the little drawer, you dug out the card and got the numbers, which corresponded to the book number on the Dewey Decimal System. Ah, boy, that was a mouthful. And then when libraries went over to computerization, you could just get these card catalogs, the whole thing, not just the drawers. You could pick them up on curbsides. You could get them for a few dollars at junk stores. You could go to your library and have them simply because you were willing to cart them away. This is very clever because, of course, we have the library connection with the card catalog boxes and the books inside them. So it's sort of like a visual pun. I love it. In this case, what we have are the boxes, the drawers, affixed to the wall. There are 12 of them, perfectly symmetrical. Boy, this just makes my OCD glow with joy. And then the books are inside, hang, hanging on the wall this way. Now, I have to say that the, the effect of the symmetry of all of those boxes has been undermined by the, the lack of either perfect symmetry or deliberate asymmetry in the books. If you're going to do it, go one way or another. If you're going to make something symmetrical, make it symmetrical. If you're not going to make it symmetrical, then highlight the asymmetry. Because when you have your foot only halfway through the door, it's just jarring to your viewers. They will be expecting symmetry. And when the human brain expects symmetry, it gets very irritated when it sees that symmetry fail. So remember, two ways to do this, very symmetrical, or you could take that same symmetrical layout of boxes and then organize the books in a rather asymmetrical way. So overall, I think they did a good job. My complaints are very small. So here we have a very similar uh, sort of concept boxes on walls holding things, not at all the same. This is completely asymmetrical, but they've done it in an interesting way. You can trace some very distinct vertical lines with the edges of the boxes in some places, some distinct horizontal lines in others. Overall, I think this was very, very effectively done Unfortunately, most of what we're showing off here now is shells once again. But just picture that in your own home holding your own stuff. I think this is a very, very effective display because in lining up the boxes the way they did, they made room for these large glass whatever they are. And I do not know what those glass things are. They look like they might be old-fashioned lampshades to me. I'm not sure. They've made room for this. They have arranged their boxes in such a way that the collections are being held perfectly well. I think overall, remarkably effective. So we go from effective to 
a lesson in what not to do. Now, this is interesting because you, you have a very unusual collection here of small dolls. And some things were done right. Uh, let me start with, I love the impact of the color. Not the individual dolls, but the overall impact of all of the dolls together. Color, color is very interesting. It looks like this cabinet was made from an old storm window that has just been attached to a simple box with shelves. Very good. Something like that would be extremely effective in a, a primitive setting or even uh, a shabby chic Parisian apartment sort of thing. What they did wrong here is too much. You can't see any of the individual dolls because that cabinet is stuffed so full of dolls. I would strongly suggest, if I knew the person who did this, that they grab two-thirds of those dolls, wrap them up in archival tissue, stick them in document boxes, and lay out one-third. And if they want to show the rest of their collection, then maybe, you know, January, February, when it's winter and you're in the house and you're bored, switch it out and then leave another third of the collection up for a year or maybe a month, you know, but you don't have to show every single thing you own all at once. I do want to say that with collectibles like this, storing them behind glass is a really good idea. So let's take a look at more. This is a very interesting collection of old handmade wooden spoons. The thing I dislike the most about this kitchen is I, I want to see the rest of it. We have the wooden beams up on the ceiling, that countertop and backsplash, that's soapstone. No curtains on the windows, white walls. I bet this is a gorgeous retro kitchen. And I'm just so irritated that I can't see the rest of it. Overall, I think this is a wonderful display. I only have one flaw that I picked up on this. Look at the spoons and start at the left on the bottom, third spoon in from the left. Every other line of spoons, they're arranged in vertical columns. Every other column is perfectly aligned, but that third column is not. And when something like that happens, it immediately draws your eye to it. They need to move that spoon over half an inch and I will be happy. Because, again, when you start with symmetry, carry it through, at least in the symmetry you're working with. In this case, vertical symmetry. They also did a nice uh, squaring off of the bottoms of the spoon, which is good because that soapstone backsplash provides a very clear horizon underneath the spoon collection, and they've mirrored it with the spoons above. So other than that, no, it's, it's very asymmetrical except for that vertical axis. This, well, this one is terrific. I included this because A, I love it, and B, I want you to see that you can collect anything, absolutely freaking anything, and turn it into a fantastic display. This is coat hangers. I know, you were just saying to yourself this morning, if only my living room wall was full of coat hangers, right? Of course not. These are great coat hangers, though. They're beautiful. They're old. They're unique. And I love this little bench. Uh, it's, it's clearly a handmade bench. You can see from the uneven um, slats on the wood, it's been integrated into the display. In other words, the coat hangers are going around the bench. The bench is not covering uh, coat hangers. And you will see this from time to time in some of the other images I'm going to show you, that people have thrown up their collection and then put stuff in front of it. 
excuse me, what's the point of showing off your collection if you're just going to turn around and let the floor lamp hide it? This is terrific. This is whimsical. This is just, oh, I'm really, don't you just want to know the person that did this? Isn't this someone you really, really want to sit down and talk to for an hour or so? This is terrific. So let's move from that over to a little more pedestrian fare. And now we're going to take a look at special purpose displays. In this case, we're starting off with a spoon rack. Obviously, special purpose designed to display spoons. But that doesn't mean it's all you can display here. You could take a collection of antique keys and pop them in just the same way you would the spoons. You could put this in your bedroom. You could have your necklaces, your bracelets, your earrings, whatever, dangling from those little wooden keyholes. This is a common type of storage item that you can get at thrift stores, junk stores, dollar stores even, and absolutely anywhere you look on the internet, and for cheap, too. Another kind of special purpose storage, this is for baseball cards. We have a plexiglass door, so it kind of looks like a picture frame with the glass and a little bit of molding around the edges. The cards are all safe. Now, baseball cards can be extremely valuable, so you want to keep them safe. But just take a look at that. Your old seed packets could go in there. Your postcards could go in there. You could line those little shelves up with cute little mice and figurines. Don't overlook pre-made special purpose storage items like this. Um, here's another one for shot glasses. These were made on the same idea of those printer trays. This one has a glass door. Always very nice because it keeps your items dust free. This can be used in any way you would use uh, the printer's tray. Think of it as a printer's tray with a glass door. So those shells, boy, they could go right in here, along with any other small items. Here's another special purpose storage item. Coffee travels. Obviously, this is designed to hold mugs from different areas. But how easy would it be to simply paint over coffee travels or, you know, get a couple of thumbtacks and get some interesting postcards and use those hooks to store uh, your jewelry collection. Um, I was looking at the fact that they are offset. Each one of them is offset, meaning that the drop under each hook is probably a good eight inches. You could show off a hanky collection with eight inches. You could show off a collection of vintage keys, vintage hardware, anything you can fit on a little hook like that. If it's under eight inches and you can hang it, you can hang it from that. Here is another one, golf balls. Again, special purpose designed for golf balls. Still, we could take that, we could throw shot glasses in there instead of golf balls. We could throw in shells, rocks, whatever, as long as it's small. And keep in mind that this, too, has a nice glass door. It also has that interesting chevron shape, which might make it a more desirable storage piece for somebody. Finally, this is the last of the special purpose storage we're going to take a look at. For those of you with sons or grandsons, especially if your sons or grandsons are urban young males, you're going to know about this. They collect sneakers. And they want to show off their collections. This is perfect. And these are special purpose shoe 
storage display racks. My local running shoe store, and there's actually a store here that specializes in running shoes, they show their sneakers on racks virtually identical to these. And I suspect these particular racks did come from a shoe store. Now, you wouldn't have to use that for sneakers, although obviously, if you want to store sneakers and show them off at the same time, it's perfect. You can put anything on here. You, you could show dolls on here. Um, the distance between one shelf and the next shelf down is probably about 12 inches. So if you have large three-dimensional items that are under 12 inches tall, for example, you might have a fabulous collection of vases. Something like that would be a perfect storage vehicle. So, going from special purpose storage items to our next topic, we're going to look at some special purpose storage pieces for dishes. Uh, this is a Welsh dresser. These pieces, or pieces like this, have been used for hundreds of years to show off China, dating back to the time when having real porcelain to eat off of was a mark of wealth and luxury. As you can see, we're looking at just the family China, you know, the everyday eating China service laid out in this Welsh cupboard. It's very symmetrical. Uh, it's one pattern repeated over and over again. So there's a certain lack of visual interest in that. But if you have China, you need to store it. Why not do, do it like this? Kill two birds with one stone. Store your China and provide a decorative accent for your home. Here's another one. This one is a little less symmetrical than the previous one. Again, basically Welsh dresser. These were designed to store your china. But what we're, what we're really moving into here is how to show off a collection of plates in a more creative way. And that's what's up next. This is one of my favorites in terms of images, uh, in terms of the images I have for you today. It's terrific. We've got a whole bunch of different plates here. None of them are really expensive. I would have to say most of them look like thrift store plates to me. Just a pretty assortment of plates. There's a Delft plate here. There's a plate with fruit on it that's probably German. There's a rooster plate. So let me tell you what they did right on this. This is a very symmetrical space they're working in. It's uh, essentially a rectangle near the door. They have a very symmetrical piece of furniture in there. Notice, though, it's placed off-center. They have a lamp right in the middle of it. Now, personally, I would change the lamp, but that's just me. Lamp in the middle of it, very symmetrical. And all of a sudden, we have this wonderful, sweeping arc of color from the plates. And notice that it's sort of reflecting that Palladian window over the top of the door. Really, really effective. Now, here we have plates on the wall that are laid out very symmetrically. And frankly, I find the plates very boring. I do not, these do not strike me as valuable plates. Um, it's, you know, I went to Target and picked out a few plates. That's what it looks like. What we have here is a symmetry problem. Now, I said this before, if you're going to do symmetry, go all the way. What happens in a situation like this is you line up four round plates on the bottom, and then on the top, you have two round plates and a square plate in the middle. Because of all that symmetry, you need to follow through. That square plate should be directly above the center point 
between the two round plates on the bottom. It's not. So it needs to be moved over. So what went wrong with this? Uh, well, it's easy. What went wrong with this is they did not lay out their design on the floor before they put it on the wall. If you want to put plates on the wall, that's your first step. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Here is another absolutely wonderful asymmetrical layout of plates. These plates, there's less breathing room around each plate. One plate kind of flows into the next. And in fact, in a couple of instances, one plate overlaps the other. Still, I, I think this is a very attractive display. I am not concerned by the overlapping of the plates, although I have to say, usually, I just don't find that appealing. Some people do, I don't. In this case, because we have this wonderful, primarily blue color theme going on here, I like it. I love the way it extends over the door. Uh, I love the, it, it's dynamic. It really is, there's so much motion in that design. It's terrific. Now here we have, because um, we're going to talk about that whole symmetry thing. Here we have a room with a symmetrical assortment of plates over the sofa. And we've got a problem because the spacing of the plates is not even. Some plates are a good two inches in separation. Others are practically touching. Now, if you're going to do this, go all the way. And again, we have symmetry on, on other levels here, too. For example, the plate above and below the clock, they are both red and white. The plates on the left and right of the clock are both blue and white. There's a lot of symmetry. So what we need is more symmetry. I found, however, another image of this with a change in one plate. So take a look. Here it is. They've switched out that clock for a smaller plate. This looks much better, primarily because now all the plates have roughly the same amount of a breathing room. So, Let's take a look at something else. Here, again, we have symmetry. Personally, I find that very boring. I find those plates boring. I find that diamond-shaped design boring. I, that does nothing for me. And that is here, by the way, as a, ew, this is probably not what you should do. What I do like about it is it's not centered over the sofa. That's probably the only thing I like about this design. Here is another, um, it, and this is over a headboard. It looks like the plates were just put up without much measurement, but because this is completely asymmetrical, you don't really notice. They've kept the spacing pretty even so the fact that they haven't precisely measured is not a problem. Nice, dynamic, a lot of color coming from that. Much better than our previous four plates, top, bottom, side to side. This is interesting. This would look great over that other sofa. Here is another one. And what they've done with this is they've incorporated everything into this wonderful wall display. The items on the table below the plates are part of the overall design. So when they put up the plates, they took into consideration that they were going to have to clear the antlers of that deer on the bottom. They were going to have to clear that tall candlestick. And they sort of wrapped the plate design around the rest of their decorating features. Very, very well done. Um, it's, a, it's very neutral 
color scheme. We've got brown, white, blue. That's pretty much it here, but it's effective. Oh, and those plates, those are not just, you know, thrift store plates. Those are thrift store bins plates. These are plates you can probably pick up for literally 25 cents a pound at the Goodwill bin. Here's another what not to do. Plates, because they were designed to be right in front of your face because you're literally eating off them, were designed to be viewed up close. Putting plates on a wall, and keep in mind, this is a good 10 feet off the ground, means that unless you know, you're like Superman with his supervision, you're not going to be able to enjoy anything of these plates. Um, you'll be lucky if you can tell what color they are from 10 feet below. And keep in mind, your eye distorts pictures. Uh, this is something any of you who have studied art and taken a look at the old Byzantine mosaics will know. Uh, they look terrible when you look at them head on but they look perfectly proportionate when you look at them from 20 feet below. Your eye distorts when you look up. So looking up, no, you're losing any impact those plates would have had. And in fact, the colors are so muted that you, know, you can hardly tell what's on the wall. This is one of those, oh gee, why bother? Now this, this is a very symmetrical arrangement of plates. They are lined up on the vertical, uh, around the sconce, two above, one below. The plates are, are roughly rectangular with squared off corners. They are all Canton, China, with willowware pattern. Very very symmetrical, very matched look. But all they've really done is lined it up on the vertical. That's it. They have two above, one below. The spacing appears to be almost random. The reason this isn't a problem in this particular configuration is because there are too few pieces. When you have two pieces on the wall, Whatever space is between them is clearly the space that was meant to be between them because there's no other point of comparison. With something like this, again, we have three separated by the sconce, no point of comparison. You can do whatever spacing you want as long as you maintain that vertical line. And notice another nice little touch. There is a Canton vase that's been turned into a lamp on the sideboard to the left. This is a very formal room. Most of the rooms we've seen thus far with plates on the walls have been relatively informal, but this, no, this is a formal room. And here, this is symmetry gone wild. Boy, even my OCD can't find a flaw with this. These look like they are probably Bradford Exchange or some similar collectible plate that, you know, one buys off the internet or off a television commercial. It's a whole series of so-called collectible plates. Don't do that. Go to the Goodwill, go to the bins, go to whatever. I promise you, the cheap plate you bought at the Goodwill is probably just as valuable as any of these. This is one of the worst investments you can make. But I have to give them props. This is beautifully symmetrical. Now, what they've done wrong is remember that cabinet full of dolls? Way too much here. They should cut this back by half. They're not going to because this is their valuable Bradford Exchange plate collection, they should cut it by half and it would be more effective if it were a little more restrained. But I did want you to see this 
The symmetry is gorgeous. The spacing is gorgeous. If you have a super formal room and you want perfect symmetry, boy, take a picture of this and use it as your model. Now here, what we have here, and again, we have this nice uh, Canton ware, a number of different pieces. But notice this, especially after that last perfectly spaced display. These pieces were eyeballed into place, and you can tell. Uh, everything looks a little skewed, a little crooked, a little off. Never do that. You want to put up something like this, lay those plates on the floor first. Decide on your design what plate is going to be in relationship to what other plate. Then measure and mark on your wall. Don't do your mistakes with your hammer. Do it with your tape measure. Okay, here we go. This is, boy, this is annoying to me. We have something that is so crazy symmetrical in some ways. But again, the plates have been eyeballed into place. So some plates are virtually touching each other while others are two, three inches away. Doesn't work. If you're putting up plates, even if they're asymmetrical, you want an approximate amount of breathing room around each plate that will be consistent throughout your design. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly consistent, but what you do not want is four inch gaps and then plates sitting on top of one another. It's jarring to the eye. Now, taking this particular vignette here, we have two leather chairs perfectly matched with two fluffy white pillows on them, perfectly matched, and a little table dead center, and then dead center on the table, we have a lamp, a figural Chinese lamp. What I like about these plates, first of all, is I like the splash of color. I think this dark red color was the perfect choice. It's great. I think more symmetry on top of all the symmetry that's already there is a huge mistake. I also think that if you're going to put the plates on the wall, why are you hiding them with your figural lamp in front? All you can do is detract from your plates or your lamp. You know, just, you can't have both. If I were dealing with this, well, first of all, those plates are pretty much all the same. So I look at that and say, huh, what's the point? I would probably cut back by two thirds on the number of plates and I would use a nice little asymmetrical arc over the top of the lampshade to break up that harsh symmetry. So we are not just out of time, we are way over time already. So I have more, in fact, I told you I was going to share jars with you. Boy, we just, the time got away from me. We'll take a look at that tomorrow. Uh, and we are continuing our how to store and display your collectibles. So have a terrific day. I will see you tomorrow and enjoy the slideshow on your way out.